Alrighty, thank you everyone so much for joining us. Welcome to the Claremont College's information session. Uh, as a reminder, the session will last about an hour. We're going to start with uh, uh, have the presenters introduce themselves. We'll do an introduction of the Claremont College's consortium. And then the bulk of the time we'll be um, talking about our own institutions, but we will leave time for a live question and answer session at the end of the hour. Uh, and the topic of this session is life outside of the classroom. So we'll talk about um, what are how our students engage in life outside of the classroom, campus life, residential life, student clubs and organizations, research, internships, study abroad. It's a lot to cover, um, but we hope that you get just a better sense of what life can be like inside and outside the classroom at our consortium at our at, at, at and our, at our individual colleges. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, and so just a, a few tech reminders, um, you are not on video and you're not on audio, but you are welcome to interact with us with the Q&A box that you see at the bottom of your screen. You can ask us questions and we will do our best to answer all of your questions. If we don't get to all your questions though, we the last slide that we'll share will be our admission offices email addresses and then you can reach out to us afterwards to get your questions answered. Um, and the session will also be recorded. So if you miss anything or you wanna rewatch it, it'll be posted on our Claremont College's YouTube page. So without further ado, I'll introduce myself and then I'll go ahead and turn it over to my colleagues to introduce their self, themselves. Uh, so my name is Anna Marie Wood. I am Senior Assistant Director of Admission at Scripps College and I'm also a graduate of Scripps. So I'm an alum from the class of 2013. Hey y'all, my name is Carolyn Starks. I am an Assistant Dean of Admissions at Pomona College. I'm super, super excited to be here with you this morning. And I hope that you learn some fun things about the Claremont Colleges. I'll then pass it over to my next colleague, probably Yanelli and Becky. <laughs> yes, thank you, Carolyn. Um, hi, good morning, good afternoon for some of you, and maybe good evening as well. My name is Yanelli Ruiz Bus. I serve as an assistant dean of admissions here at Claremont McKenna College. I too am an alumna and a graduate of the class of 2012. And today I will be tag teaming the CMC presentation with my friend and colleague, who I will now hand the floor over to so she can introduce herself. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Becky Graham. I'm an admission officer at Claremont McKenna College. Like you know, mentioned, we'll be um, presenting about CMC together. I'm really excited to be here and to share about CMC and hopefully you guys learn some fun things and nice to see all you guys. And passing it now on to my colleague at Harvey Mudd, Maureen. Hi everyone, my name is Maureen Riesenstrom. I am an associate director of admissions. Uh, I am also a Harvey Mudd alumna, and my pronouns are she, her, Aya, and I'm happy to be with you this morning. Hi everyone, my name is Haley Burke, and I'm one of the assistant directors of admission at Pitzer. My pronouns are she, her, hers. Thank you so much for joining us today. Awesome, thank you all so much. So I will stop sharing my screen and then turn it over to Maureen for an overview of the Claremont Colleges. Perfect, so I believe you should be seeing my screen, which is just a lovely picture of the Claremont Colleges. One of my colleagues can tell me if that's not the case. Uh, before we get started, I do wanna give a small, small disclaimer because this is life in the middle of a pandemic. I, like many people around the United States, I'm working from home. I have two small dogs at home. They should be okay, they're fed, they were walked, but they are cranky old men. So if there's some noise outside, you might hear them bark and I apologize in advance. Um, Great. So I also want to start in talking about the Claremont Colleges by acknowledging that the Claremont Colleges are actually on land that used to belong to the Tongva people. Uh, the Tongva people lived across 100 villages and they occupied much of the LA basin. Uh, they had a large diversity of natural resources because they lived across multiple ecological zones here in Southern California. Uh, they honored the land, they continued to do so, and believed in a reciprocal uh, a relationship of respect and care between humans, plants, animals, and land. Uh, and as recent as just a couple of years ago, there was as many as, or as, as close to 4,000 people that still identified or claimed ancestry uh, tied to the Tongva people. So I just wanted to start with that. So uh, moving forward, the Claremont Colleges is a consortium of um, seven institutions five undergraduate small liberal arts colleges and two graduate schools. Usually when people talk about the Claremont Colleges or the five C's, they're referring to the small undergraduate institutions just because there is a lot of collaboration between us. But what does that mean? What does it mean to be part of a consortium? So basically that means that we're a group of schools that came together just so we could share stuff, right? That stuff being classes, being meals, being events, et cetera. 
Um, Moreover, um, we are actually a very much intentional consortium. So consortia, this idea of like colleges coming together and sharing stuff is not unique to the Clare to here in Claremont. It's actually very common in places where there's a high density of small liberal arts colleges, like in the East Coast and in the Midwest. But the difference is that ours was kind of planned from the beginning. Pomona College does precede the, the consortium, but starting in the 1920s, really this idea came about that one college would be added every single decade throughout the 1900s or throughout the rest of the 1900s. Um, again, literally across the street from each other. So we could really make it easy for our students to share resources, to go take classes at other colleges, to go uh, participate in activities and events, share meals with other students, et cetera. And I'm gonna talk about the things that we share in more detail in just a couple of minutes. But just to give you a little bit more kind of context, just imagine as if your high school was built across the street from another high school. And let's say that you play an instrument, but you wanna participate in marching band and your school doesn't have it. But that other school does have marching band and you could just go across the street during your fourth period, you know, every Tuesday and go participate in marching band. That's pretty much the setup here in Claremont. Um, before I continue to talk about how we share resources, I really want to talk about our location because it's really great. We are 35 miles or 55 kilometers from the city of Los Angeles. Los Angeles is the third largest city in the United States, which means that as a whole in this area, we have an incredible sense of diversity and many cultural and recreational opportunities that our students take full advantage of. Um, moreover, we're in this really great location because we're about an hour right from the city, but also from the beach, from the mountains, from the desert, et cetera. So, so that's definitely one of the really great things about going to college here in Claremont. Um, as a consortium, we really give you uh, the very cliched phrase of the best of both worlds, right? So we give you all the benefits that come from attending a small institution. So if you're checking out potentially other small colleges, other small liberal arts colleges, you've probably heard things like small class sizes. On average here at MUD, uh, at, across the consortium, sorry, we have our average class size of somewhere between 15 to 20 students. Uh, we also have a student to faculty ratio of somewhere between eight or nine uh, to one. Um, as a result, we have a lot of small classes that are centered on discussion. We have close relationships with our faculty. You'll get to know most, if not all of the people in your class, uh, most if not all the people in your department, most of, or if not all the people in your, in your dorms, for example. We're also extremely residential. So most of our students live on campus across the five colleges for most of their, for, for the entirety of their time here in Claremont, so throughout their four years. We also give you a lot of the benefits that would be associated, let's say, with a maybe small to mid-sized university. So across the consortium, you'll find over 6,000 students, you'll find over 2,000 classes, um, about seven dining halls plus 10 additional other eateries, perhaps coffee shops, late night eateries, diners, little shops. Uh, each, college is, each college has its own clubs or student organizations, but there's a whole other batch of 350 plus 5C or 5 college shared clubs. We share crucial resources like the ones you see on screen right now. We have a shared library. We have student resources such as the Office of Black Student Affairs, Chicano Latino Student Affairs, the Chaplains, the Queer Resource Center, and many others. We have two music programs that are shared across the schools. Um, one is housed at Scripps, one is housed at Pomona. We also share athletics in kind of an interesting way, right? So at this point, you've probably gathered this theme that we're five schools and we share things, right? Like we have one library for the five schools. So you'd assume, oh, probably they have one athletic team. <clears throat> but in reality, we complicate things a little bit and we have two. So Claremont McKenna, Harvey Mudd and Scripps come together to form uh, CMS or Claremont Mudd Scripps. And then Pomona Pitzer come together to form Pomona Pitzer. Uh, we are, bo both of our teams are, uh, NCAA Division III school. So there's no money tied to athletics at any of our schools. Very much we honor that idea of you being a scholar athlete. Um, we are all part of the Southern California Intercollegiate Athletic Conference, which is the athletic conference for small colleges here in Southern California. And within our conference, we are actually arch rivals. And as a fun fact, our athletic facilities are actually across the street from each other. And so uh, it creates this very, very interesting rivalry, right? Because you could be eating a meal or taking a class with someone, and then a couple hours later, you might be playing against them, right, on, on the court or in the field. Um, we also share uh, some intercollegiate majors and academic departments like Africana Studies, Media Studies, and the Joint Tech Science Department of Clever McKenna, Pitzer, and Scripps. 
which brings me to one of the things that one of the most exciting things that we share, which are classes. So every single semester, you get a list of not just a couple or several hundred courses offered on your campus, but you actually get a list of over 2000 classes offered across the colleges. You literally do registration online. So you enter the field that you're interested in, let's say economics, uh, when you get the full list of economics classes, you click on the classes that you want, and that's pretty much it for the most part. Uh, for the most part, you will have access or you'll be able to get into most of the classes offered across the consortium, regardless of uh, what institution you're officially enrolled in. Um, it gives you a lot of flexibility in terms of classes that are available to you. Um, it also makes for really rich academic uh, academic experiences because you're going to be in a small class size with with a small class with fewer than 20 students uh, with students that are taking the class because maybe they're also interested in that topic, but that are going to bring different perspectives there because they chose schools that are different to your own right, let me go back to this slide actually. Um, the last thing I want to talk about is. Um, we get a lot of questions about, you know, well, how would I go about picking schools or which one, how do I know which one do I like? And for that, I would very much guide you to, to our missions and uh, like the story of our founding, because I think that really tells, it, tells you who we are. So Pomona was founded in 1887. Their main goal was really to bring liberal arts uh, education of the New England type here to, to Southern California. Uh, in 1920, Scripps was founded right after the 19th Amendment. Um, in 1946, CMC came about really hoping to uh, educate men that were returning from war. At the time, Harvey, uh, Clara McKenna was an all men's college. Uh, they've since gone co-ed. We were founded in Harvey Mudd in 1955 in the middle of the space race when there was a high demand for technology. Uh, and in 1963, Pitzer was founded in the midst of the civil right um, movement and other social movements, right? And I think, um, these values and motivations continue to shape us to today. And I think they really shape our curriculum. They shape the things that we ask you to do, the things that we allow you to do. And I think they can really help guide your college search process. As you can see from the slide that's been in front of you for the last uh, couple of, of seconds, maybe for the last minute or so, we do have separate admission processes. So if you are interested in one or two schools, um, you would apply to, to those schools separately. We do not share uh, application information, applicant information, we would not know if you applied to Scripps or to Pomona, unless you tell us. And if you did, we wouldn't really do anything with that information. Um, and so, yeah, I think I'll leave it there for now. And I'm excited for you to learn a little bit more about opportunities outside the classroom for each of our institutions. Hello, everyone. My name is Carolyn Starks, and I am an assistant dean of admissions at Pomona. I already did this, um, but I am pulling up my video now to share with you all about um, Pomona College. Um, so at the student life experience at Pomona College is one where we definitely want students to recognize that, yes, you're coming to Pomona for an education and we want you to become academics, but what happens outside of the classroom in terms of being able to build community through our residence re residence halls, through our opportunities to get involved in student organizations and do research and internship is definitely something that we want our students to do. And so building community actually starts from the very beginning at Pomona with our orientation adventure um, experience. And that's where we send our students on a adventure um, about four or five days where you go out and you're with a group of about 20 to 30 incoming first years and you go camping or hiking or you go um, to one that people like to call fake away where you get to have like hot water and you're staying in a cabin. And so building community and taking advantage of recognizing that there's a whole host of incoming first years a part of this new Pomona community, this new Pomona experience is definitely something that we want to integrate you into as well. Another part of the Pomona experience in terms of student life is our sponsor group in our residence halls. So all incoming first years are a part of a group of about 15 first years and they live on the same hall with one another and they have two second year mentors who play the role of older sibling on campus and they're able to give you an opportunity as a listening ear so rather than RAs at other institutions your sponsor um, mentor leader is someone that is doesn't have any disciplinary power so it really harnesses and utilizes a, um, a very trusting relationship and gives you the opportunity to call them when you're in a sticky situation and call them if you need help. Um, here, the building that we just walked through 
is our Smith Camper for Student Life. And that is where a lot of our clubs and organizations and um, some of the governing boards of our students live on, or they're housed on campus. The Smith Center is home to our quantitative skills lab, which is where students can go to get support for different um, resources in terms of math and STEM. It's also home to um, a lot of rooms that our students can rent out. And how you get involved with different clubs and organizations on our campus is through Turf Dinner, which is something that happens at the beginning of every year. And actually all 250 different clubs and organizations that all the Claremont colleges have sit out um, and come together and students can go and see the plethora and the array of different organizations. Um, what's really powerful about the clubs and organizations on most of the Claremont College's campuses and specifically Pomona, there aren't any restrictions of, or applications that you have to apply to be a part of. So being able to go and sign up for really any club that you've never even heard of. If you are not outdoorsy at all, you can definitely be a part of On The Loose, our, our outdoors club. If you've never been a ballroom dance person, but you're really interested in learning and competing and growing in that skill, you can absolutely join the Claremont College um, dance team that they actually go out um, across the country even sometimes and go um, and compete. Um, we also have this really, really quirky number at Pomona College known as the number 47, um, which if you ever speak to one of our students, you should definitely ask them about. And one of the things is um, 47 things. And every year the college has different trips sponsored by ASPC or the college at large, where you can go out and do one of the 40, 47 things that you're supposed to do before you graduate. One of them is get a strawberry donut from, I believe it's called Donut Man, and they're super, super tasty, and you'll probably go more than once, so it'll definitely be something that you do a couple of times. Another campus tradition that you're seeing here is Ski Beach Day, where we take our students up to the uh, Mount Baldy, the Scan Gabriel Mountains in the morning, and they go surfing, and then in the after, or go skiing, excuse me, but in the afternoon, we take them down to Manhattan Beach or Malibu, and they go surfing. What you're also seeing now is another really exciting part of the Pomona 47 things is 4-7 today. So on April 7th, Pomona closes campus or closes the quad and they have zip lines and they have food trucks and you get to really experience everything um, that 47 really means to the college and, and just kind of come together and build up an opportunity to connect with your Pomona peers. Another really huge piece of the Pomona experience is obviously this co curricular learning that you do through research and internships, and that will hopefully set you up for your time after Pomona. Pomona has two flagship um, programs, first one being SERP, which stands for Summer Undergraduate Research Program, which every single year Pomona funds about 200 to 220 students to go out into the world and do their research. And you can do it in Los Angeles, you can do it in California, you can do it in Taiwan, you can do it in any place that is really drawing your eye. And so just having a conversation with your peers um, about what you're thinking about doing your research on and then sitting down and working with your faculty mentor or your faculty advisor or the person who will helping be navigate helping you navigate your research experience at Pomona is um, basically how that happens and then you apply for funding um, in Internships are also a really powerful part of the Pomona experience because fun fact, young people, you'll have about seven careers in your life. So knowing that you are multifaceted, multi-interested young people that are going to evolve over time, getting involved and in having a experience in the real world prior to entering the real world is definitely that something that we want our students to know and take advantage of and really know that the college is going to financially support you and have that experience and, and allow you to, again, really take your advantage of everything that has to offer. And I think I've taken up my six minutes with that. So thank you so much. And I'm very excited to answer any additional questions that you may have um, throughout the chat. Um, and I'm going to pass it off to my colleague, Anna Marie at Scripps. Awesome, thank you so much, Carolyn. Hi everyone again. So my name is Anna Marie Wood. I'm Senior Assistant Director of Admission at Scripps and also a graduate from the class of 2013. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how uh, what life outside the classroom looks like at Scripps. And so when I think about how students are engaging outside of the classroom here, I think one thing that comes to mind at first is that we are a residential campus. Um, so about 94% of our students live on campus or in campus sponsored housing for all four years. Housing is guaranteed. 
And in every residence hall, there are resident coordinators who are current students, and their role is to design experiences that create a built-in community uh, of friends and a rich campus experience. Um, they do this by putting on events like community dinners or screen on the green when students watch a movie on the lawn. Given our almost 300 days of sunshine per year, we can pretty much make this happen. Uh, and then beginning in your sophomore year at Scripps, students have the opportunity to join a learning or thematic community where there's a shared common residential experience based on an academic study of lifestyle. For example, there's one for leadership, one for science and technology, health and wellness, creativity, and there's also foreign language halls, Spanish, German, Italian, and French. Another one of my favorite events that happens is at, um, at Scripps is called Scripps Presents, where we bring a mix of storytellers and artists policymakers and musicians, uh, we bring them to campus or virtually. Uh, and these are speakers who love storytelling, like Kevin Kwan, who wrote Crazy Rich Asians, or Michael Barbaro of the New York Times, The Daily Podcast. But also importantly, bringing female speakers who are often the first, like Nancy Pelosi, first woman speaker of the house, or Lena Waithe, first black woman to win an Emmy for outstanding writing for a comedy series. So the stories, the passions, perspective of these speakers encourage us to think about the way that we see the world and our impact on society. And another way that Scripps students like to do this is through experiences um, such as study abroad. So our students love to study abroad. About 60% of students will do that. Whether you wanna study uh, you know, Middle Eastern history in Jordan or ecology in Costa Rica or economics in London, there's a program for you. We have over 120 different approved programs in 47 different countries. And as fully enrolled Scripps students, study abroad participants continue to pay the same Scripps uh, semester fees for tuition and room and board as every other semester on campus, regardless of the program chosen and where it is. Scripps students also love to intern. So about 80% of students will complete at least one internship before they graduate. Uh, and actually about a quarter of our students will complete at least three before they graduate. So internships are definitely a big deal at Scripps. Scripps provides uh, financial support for students who want to pursue summer internships. Uh, and some of these summer internships are on campus. For example, you can intern in our art gallery, uh, which fun fact has the longest running exhibition of contemporary ceramics in the country. Uh, and then some off-campus internships you can do include uh, 20th Century Fox Studios, Girls Who Code, the Guggenheim Museum, the Feminist Majority Foundation, and the Seattle Aquarium. And then back on campus, students also engage in on-campus clubs or organizations. We call them CLORGs at Scripps. You'll find that a lot of colleges like acronyms and <laughs> uh, Scripps is definitely a school that loves its acronyms. Um, and we have more than 30 different CLORGs at Scripps, some of which you can see on this slide. Student engagement at Scripps also includes on-campus jobs. So about 70% of Scripps students will have an on-campus job. And these jobs range from being an admissions ambassador, a resident coordinator, peer health educator, even manager of our student run student uh, student run student store and our student run Motley Coffee House. That's a lot of the words to do. So whether you're leading your peers, um, you know, with let's say the outdoor wilderness leadership club on a hiking expedition in the California desert, or whether you're training your peers to be a barista at our student run Motley Coffee House, you're practicing your leadership skills almost every day at Scraps. And that's something that's important to us um, with this idea of student leadership. Um, and the fact is that you know we're a women's college and that's why that's important to us. This is a place where women hold leadership positions. It's a place where women support other women. And we talk about what female leadership means and what that looks like to us. The last percentage for leadership at Scripps is, um, is our, one of our offices that is determined to close the gender leadership gap uh, and encourages our students to think about leadership in a different way. One way that LASPA does this is by providing grants for students to do a self-design project. For example, uh, one student learned about reproductive health care rights in Tunisia. Uh, this past January, LASPA took a group of students to Washington, D.C. Um, to learn from and network with women, including Scripps alumni, who are shaping our nation's STEM policies and agenda. So I'd like to close by just, you know, emphasizing that Scripps is a place where women have the opportunity to lead their peers and use their voice. I had no idea that I would end up at a women's college in my college research process. And after having spent my four years at Scripps, I can't imagine my undergrad experience not at a, at a women's college. It was a place where I felt like I really grew as a student, as a person, as a leader. And as you've learned too, is, uh, you know, you really do get the best of both worlds at Scripps, that empowering women's college experience where you get to practice your leadership skills with student engagement and life outside the classroom. And you also get the experience of a co-ed setting with the consortium that we're in. So I will stop there and turn it over to my colleagues from Claremont McKenna College. Thank you so much, Anna Marie. All right, let me make sure that I can share my screen as well. Perfect. All right, can I get a thumbs up from Anna Marie? Is it? It looks great, Anneli. Perfect. Thank you so much. All right, let's dive right in here. 
Perfect. All right. In a given semester at CMC, you are taking four classes. You may have two classes on a Monday and Wednesday and two on Tuesday and Thursday. Each class will meet for approximately two hours and 30 minutes per week. That means you are in class for about 10 hours, and that leaves you with about 158 hours outside of the classroom. So the question is, right, what are you doing outside of this classroom experience? Um, within a week, you may actually be heading over to the Dean of Students office to meet with a success consultant. Success Success consultants offer one on one sessions to CMC students to help with goal setting and habit building, streamlining workflow, sleep management, stress tolerance, strategies to assist you with time management and organization, uh, test anxiety, efficient reading and note taking and exam prep. Or you may be meeting with a peer tutor. Peer tutoring is offered in specific subject areas, uh, either one on one or small group meetings, and they are available beginning the fourth week of the semester and end on the last day of classes. Every afternoon as well, starting at 3 p.m., you can walk over to the AF at CMC and enjoy AF tea. Every CMC student can come up and pick up a free cup of Joe tea, a juice, uh, and treat yourself to a chocolate covered strawberry, a rice crispy tree, a red velvet cake, warm chocolate chip cookies, while enjoying a nice break from your meetings or classes or sports activities that you're going to partake in. I also can't leave this slide without addressing a longstanding tradition at Claremont McKenna, and I'd like to direct your attention to the picture you see on the left side of your screen. On, you, for, on your birthday, you get carried by a group of friends and ponded in one of our fountains. You can see here <laughs> our Dean of Academic Success, Sean Rolo Lazo, enjoying and partaking in that particular experience. Um, all right, let's go ahead and move on to clubs and organizations. There's a lot of text here, but let me try to break it down. So clubs on campus at CMC, there are over 50 different clubs and organizations that you can be a part of. Uh, they definitely cater to a variety of interests, cultures and activities. As you can see on this screen, there's academic and professional clubs like our four time back to back to back to back model United Nations world champions. There's service and athletics, special interest in publications, identity based. Uh, there's going to always be a club fair at the beginning of the year where you have the opportunity to connect with members from each club and organization and sign up to be a member. Um, I'd like to go ahead and give a shout out to our college programming board that you see here on the upper left hand corner. CPB is a student run organization charged with the creation, organization and implementation of inclusive programming for students at CMC. They work closely with the student activity staff and CPB provides a multitude of programs on nights and weekends for students to enjoy. These events are free to our students and are on a first come first serve sign up basis. Uh, events hone in on wellness. So for example, you can sign up to join us for a yoga class uh, on Santa Monica Beach and then enjoy a brunch session, a uh, special cinema, dive in movie nights. We go ahead and we set up a giant screen and you can watch a movie under the stars in Southern California. There's city life. Um, you can actually see here a little snippet, went to go see a Lakers game, going to see see the Dodgers play, so many activities that you could partake in. Uh, but there's also intramural drop in recreation classes and varsity games. You may want to engage in athletics and join a team within your dorm that's going to compete for the championship when it comes to bubble soccer or inner tube water polo. Uh, you may want to drop in and take a spin class or a Zumba class or a yoga class or as very um, common that takes place a Pomona Pitzer versus Claremont Mutt Scripps basketball game. So lots to do on that front. I'm going to turn it over to my colleague Becky in just a second, but I want to go ahead and just touch a little bit on residential life here. A couple of things, approximately 94% of our students live on campus. There are 14 residence halls and one student apartment complex. There are three different types of floor plans in the residence halls. So you have North Quad, then you have mid quad and south quad. Oh, here we go. And very important to share out, we do not have freshman dorms at CMC. Every dorm on our campus houses freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors. We have a substance free hall. We have gender inclusive residence halls as well. Um, and every dorm on our campus houses laundry facilities for our students. All right, turning it over to Becky. 
All right. Um, and so up next, um, you should see our Soul Center for Student Opportunity, which this is home to all of our career services sponsored internship programs. Um, so at CMC, something unique we do is we actually do career advising through interest clusters, and you can see the nine different ones on the screen right there. Um, this model just really ensures that students have the ability and the opportunity to explore different um, interests and interact with professionals from different industries. Um, also through our sponsored internship program, that's something that students will take advantage of by getting funding for their summer internships, um, which is amazing. So how this works is it typically around like January, February, you'd go through application workshops and then you apply by March to get funding for a summer internship. Um, this past summer, over 500 students received funding with an average award of 3,100 for their internship. And these can be anywhere in the world, like some students go internationally, some students stay close to home, and it's typically about a four to eight week period. So a lot of professional development through the Soul Center, um, and overall about 95% of students will have at least one internship. Um, and another thing on the next slide, you'll see um, research opportunities as well. So that's something that CMC offers a lot of. Um, something unique is our 11 research institutes and centers we have on our campus, and you'll see the list of them on the right side of the screen. This really offers a graduate level research opportunities to our undergrad students and mentorship as well. Um, through these institutes, you actually get to like take on real world projects and studies and you have access to on campus workshops, guest speakers, national conferences. Um, so a lot of ways to dive into the world of research. Also, we have research through our care shared Keck Science Center. Um, we also have a required senior thesis that involves research as well that every cmc -er will be doing. So a lot of different ways to engage in the research world. And on total, about 80% of our students are doing some sort of faculty-led research. Um, and on the next slide, you'll see all of our um, study off-campus opportunities in different ways you can study off-campus, both domestic and international. Um, so we have a lot of different programs in over 40 countries abroad that about 40% of our students are taking advantage of and doing some sort of program. But also a unique thing to CMC is our two domestic programs, which on the screen to the right, you'll see Silicon Valley in Washington, DC. These are internship based programs. So actually while you're, look, for example, you're at DC for the semester, you actually will have a full-time internship in addition to taking a couple of classes. So some DC internship sponsors include the White House, Environmental Protection Agency, CNN, um, the Senate, some, some um, internship sponsors at Silicon Valley include Apple, in Intel, LinkedIn, Tesla. So really cool ways to get engaged in the real world still while being a, a CMC student. Um, and that kind of wraps up just different ways how CMC offers a practical, pragmatic, educational opportunity and experiences for you all kind of taking these, what you learn in the classroom and applying it to the real world in various different ways. Um, and I'll wrap it up there and pass it on to my colleague at Harvey Mudd, Maureen. Uh, so again, I'm Maureen, I'm a Harvey Mudd alumna. I've been working at Mudd for the last seven years in the Office of Admission. And I'm happy to tell you a little bit more about who we are and opportunities outside the classroom. So within the Claremonts, we're known as the small one, which we are. <clears throat> we have just under 900 students. And it's the math and science one, which I've always found kind of funny since you can actually study STEM at any of the five institutions. The difference is that at MUD, we focus exclusively on math and we have 10 majors in the areas of science, engineering, computer science, and mathematics. The mission of, of Harvey MUD is that we seek to educate engineers, scientists, and mathematicians that are well-versed in these fields, but also in the humanities, social sciences, and the arts, so that they may assume leadership roles in their field with a clear understanding of the impact their work is gonna have on society. And and my hope for today is that this last piece, the importance of seeing your work within the context of the real world, will really come through as I talk to you about experiences outside the classroom at Harvey Mudd. I want to start by highlighting that our learning is really centered on the real world, particularly within research, which is a requirement for all mothers. But a lot of it actually ends up taking place in the real world. The photo you see here is from our Introduction to Engineering Systems course, which all mothers have to take because it's part of our core curriculum. The course introduces concepts of modern engineering through mechanical and electrical systems. Uh, and students get to literally put these to practice by creating underwater autonomous robots that they launch at nearby beaches and other bodies of water. Uh, Paul, St Paul Steinberg, who's a political science and environmental policy professor, teaches a course called Bicycle Revolution, which literally meets out in the streets of greater Los Angeles. The class explores challenges of creating bike-friendly cities and the politics of social change in urban and suburban settings, all while literally biking through those settings. 
We have a literature course called Dickens Hardy in the Victorian Era that takes place in the fall, but doesn't conclude until winter break as the class travels to London and Dorset in the UK to continue to, stud <clears throat> to study these authors. And <clears throat> this is actually a picture uh, from, from that course. Uh, so this brings me to the point of study abroad. Yes, very much a possibility regardless of your major. And I'll point out that that's not the case for STEM majors at all institutions. Um, but what I really want to highlight is that many of our students actually get to travel abroad outside of our traditional study abroad program. I already mentioned the Dickens Hardy class. Professor Wang in the engineering department travels to China most summers to teach one of our electronics courses. And he usually brings a group of mutters with him to take this course as well as Mandarin while they're there. Uh, many students also get to go abroad as part of summer research. Professor Bassman in engineering and her team have traveled to University of, of New South Wales in Australia to work on novel high energy alloys. Professor Clark works on underwater autonomous robots and a few years ago he took his students to a small island to the small island nation of Malta to partner with local research archaeologists that were exploring underwater shipwrecks. And Professor Hawkins in chemistry regularly takes her students, her summer research students to the University of Paris to study environmental chemistry using their atmospheric cloud chamber. Another example of real world experiences comes through our clinic program. All mothers have to do a final capstone research project that's connected to their major, either your own individual research thesis project or a group project that's almost like an extended internship called clinic in which companies, cancer research centers, national labs come to campus with real problems they're working on. Through clinic, our students have done things like created computational models of what's happening inside very distant stars that we can't currently observe with our telescopes, uh, a prototype for retractable microtools meant to make brain surgery less invasive. They've helped a local bottling company that makes disposable water bottles use less plastic in their manufacturing, et cetera. Out of 50 to 55 clinic projects, um, about 10 to 15 of them will generate a patent every year. And there's always one global clinic in which students collaborate with teams from international partner schools and two social justice clinics, which aim to provide technical support to community-based organizations. Uh, for example, uh, recently designing a local solar panel fa factory that would bring solar energy to low and middle income families and create about 200 jobs. Many of our students spend their summer getting paid to do research through on campus or through internships, but we also have a number of grants and fellowships that offer financial support to students interested in exploring normally unpaid opportunities in sustainability, technical outreach, policy, international relations, social understanding, etc. Uh, within our engineering department, we also have a number of fellowships that guarantee research to students interested in biomedical, civil, industrial, and many other types of engineering. The Shanahan Project Fund makes it possible for students, either as a group or individually, to pursue research of their own design. Uh, for example, a team once worked to develop an autonomous unmanned aircraft that could aid in disaster relief. And not directly related, but still important, we do have our Leonard Fund, which allows groups of students and faculty to go out to dinner together and connect, all on the college's dime. Lastly, um, we have a very involved division of student affairs, which helps students connect through each other and with the larger community. Uh, they provide programming and resources through offices such as career services um, that put on career fairs and help you be competitive for jobs and internships, health and wellness, which educates students on mental health and puts up wellness pop-ups, institutional diversity, which is our social justice education center on campus, and community engagement, which allows you to participate in STEM outreach or connect with the world outside of the Claremont bubble in a meaningful way. And with that, I'll let uh, my Pitzer colleague take it away. So I'm here to talk to you a little bit about the youngest of the Claremont Colleges, Pitzer College. Maureen really set us up for success here in mentioning this in the intro, but Pitzer was established in 1963, which is the heart of the civil rights movement, around the same time as the farm workers movement, actually the same year as the March on Washington. We were really created to educate young people who were thinking critically about you know, the, for the first time about issues of equity and justice and race in our country. And we were intended to be this institution with a real social justice focus to the academic space. So I put our five core values here on the right for you. This is really the bread and butter of the Pitzer experience. And these five core values are going to be the lenses through which I share with you the outside of the classroom life at Pitzer. Let's go ahead and start with environmental sustainability. 
I took this really literally and I asked myself, what would you see if you walked outside of the classroom if you were a Pitzer student? And the answer is you will notice that Pitzer looks quite different than most college campuses out there. 75% of our landscaping is drought tolerant native to California landscaping. You're gonna see a lot of cacti and succulents and palm trees. You'll also notice our LEED certified buildings for energy efficiency. We have solar panels, a gray water system that takes the water from your showers and your sinks and recycles it to be used to water the landscaping, as well as a smart air conditioning system that turns off the AC when you open up a window or a door and pops it back on when you close it. So you'll notice that these core values are really inherent to our community from an architectural standpoint, right, from this really ground up space in terms of we were built to be um, having this core value of sustainability in mind. I also wanted to focus on some student-led initiatives towards sustainability efforts. Just last year, our students worked to ban plastic straws on campus. Four years ago, our students also moved to ban plastic water bottles. So if you've never had the distinct pleasure of drinking out of boxed water, I can offer you that at Pitzer. Our students also moved to go trailers in the dining hall, which saved about 50% of our water consumption and dining services. I also want to highlight a student org that I think connects really well with sustainability and student engagement, which is another one of those core values. A Cleaner Tomorrow brings together students who are interested in environmental analysis and they create environmental justice curriculum and then teach that curriculum in local elementary schools to local elementary schoolers. So really I think finding this sort of intersection between your academics and then what you're doing outside of the classroom and on your own time, but also starting to have these conversations really early with our community about environmental sustainability. Also a great intersection to chat here about research. So I wanted to highlight my coworker, Natalia, who you'll see in that picture on the left. Natalia is a Pitzer grad from 2019. She's an environmental analysis and Chicanx Latinx studies major. And she actually won a National Science Foundation grant to spend a summer at our neighbor, Harvey Mudd, studying in data science, the relationship between low-income Latinx communities and sustainable transportation. So she got a $5,000 grant to do that. And I also just wanted to highlight a couple of different other opportunities here in both the STEM and the social sciences and humanities that you can see on the left of your screen in terms of research. You can get started in research as soon as your first year at Pitzer. It's really something that can happen organically by connecting with a professor that has similar interests to you, or it can happen a little bit more sort of focused by applying for one of these grants, like I mentioned earlier. All right, on to the next core value of student engagement. So students are on every standing committee of Pitzer College. That means the committee that shows our current president to the committee that chooses which professors get tenure, those all have student voting members on that particular committee. So student voice is incredibly impactful within our campus, within our community. Truly students really have the drive to make Pitzer a better place. Our students know what they want Pitzer to be. They know what Pitzer has the capacity to change into and students are really fantastic about putting that into action through their positionality on committees, also through their positionality on our student senate, which is our student governing board. Uh, like we mentioned in the intro, you know, the Claremonts have this huge span of clubs that you are able to join as a Claremont College student, but I wanted to highlight a couple that are really popular at Pitzer. One, which is Libel or Live Your Best Life Records. This is a relatively new club, which I love, and this particular club is also a student-run record label, and their intention is to elevate student voices and get students onto platforms like Spotify and Apple Music in order to share their music more widely beyond the campus. Libel also hosts our annual R&B and Hip Hop Music Festival called One Night Only. Another org that I wanted to highlight is Tutors for a Cause. And again, you'll start to see intersections, right, between social responsibility and student engagement here. Tutors for a Cause collects students together who then provide free tutoring to the children of our dining hall and facility staff members. Finally, one more really popular organization at Pitzer is called PACT, stands for Pitzer Activities. PACT puts on weekly events like our Snacky Snack, which is a late night Tuesday snack where they bring together food from local small businesses, one, and then they, you know, they serve that food for a late night study break. One particular packed event that I really loved was that they brought in the mystery berry. Um, and so they had this berry that changes food from bitter to sweet. So they'd have you taste like apple cider vinegar and see what that tastes like with the berry. Um, just a cool example of what you can do on a late night on a Tuesday because of packed. They also host events like trips to Disneyland and the beach. 
Finally, I wanted to highlight a little bit about residence life. To the left of your screen, you'll see POS, which is our first year residence complex. POS is a U-shaped building like this that houses all of our first year students and centers around, yes, this gorgeous, relaxing pool. Um, we do sort of look like a resort from time to time, especially with beautiful weather. I think that's a pretty fair assessment. But I showed a little bit of a, what a typical room looks like here in our POS residence hall. So it's a typically a suite style of living. You and a roommate share one room connected by a private bathroom to another shared room. So you have one roommate and one suite mate. All of these rooms feature Dutch doors, which are those split in half doors like this. And that was intentional. Remember how I was talking about the power of architecture towards sustainability? These Dutch doors also allow for you to build community because you can have one half open while folks are walking by and uh, they may like your music and maybe they'll stop by. A lot of my tour guides really support the statement that their friends have been made that way. And our last core value I want to focus on is intercultural understanding. Like most of my peer institutions here, our students really love to study abroad. About 53% of our students choose to do that. What makes our programs a little bit unique is that we have what are called eight, or eight direct run programs. Those programs, instead of being an exchange student at an international university, you are in a Pitzer satellite campus, just in one of these seven different locations. So you're with Pitzer students, Pitzer faculty, learning Pitzer curriculum, but really in service of this core value of, or sorry, of intercultural understanding, we require that you live with a homestay and also participate in an internship while you're there. We don't just want you to be a tourist running amok, right? We want you to have this really embedded experience toward intercultural understanding. Also, just my last point here, I wanted to point out that intercultural understanding is not just something that takes place off campus in a far-flung place. We also have a strong representation of affinity groups at Pitzer. These affinity groups serve students that have and share various different kinds of backgrounds or identities. Our largest and I would say most popular are Latinx Student Union, Black Student Union, and Asian Pacific American Coalition. But we also have spaces intended for our LGBTQ community, as well as our first gen community. And we have the Mixed Identity Exchange and our Middle Eastern and North African Student Association. And these different affinity groups put on events, but they also have special events that are coordinated, for example, with our Career Services Office for particular internship presentations, or even they have special days in the gym. For example, you can go and have your Rainbow People Collaborative only night at the gym. So I wanted to highlight that as well. But thank you so much. And uh, we'll head on to the Q&A now, I think. Wonderful. All right. I have a couple of questions that we've seen here uh, be submitted via the chat for our presenters. So I will kick off with the first one uh, tied to clubs and organizations. We had a student ask if we are interested in clubs from another college, but attend a different college, are we still allowed to join? And the second part of that is how do we go about and starting a new club? So it's a little bit different for each institution. Um, Pomona specifically, you need about seven students to say that you're going to be a part of that club and you can go to ASPC and I recognize I threw out that acronym without actually explaining what it is. It stands for Associated Students of Pomona College and you go there and you create a proposal and then you just have a conversation with them and then request funding. And it's a pretty easy process, but there does need to be a need for that club on campus rather than if there's a club that already exists, they might point you and to put you in that direction, which I think would probably be similar to the other colleges, but I don't want to speak for them. Yeah, the process on Harvey Mudd is very similar. And going to the section about your, your question about going or attending clubs at other colleges. So I can't say that I've heard much about that in part because, right, so each one of our colleges has its own set of clubs and organizations. Um, but then there is this whole other batch, a huge batch of 350 or so uh, 5C or 5 Claremont Colleges clubs. And actually, if you want to get a sneak peek into what cl those clubs might be, you can literally Google engage Claremont clubs and you'll find the full list with like a search function and things like that. Um, so I think with like the combination of like the clubs on our campus plus those 5C uh, clubs, students tend to find like what they're interested in. I'm not totally sure like if there's any rules or anything about, you know, if like a Harvey Mudd student wants to go to like a Pomona club or a Clara McKenna club. I'm not, I've not really heard about that before. And I'll follow 
follow up here. And uh, what I like to say too, is I feel like whenever we, a lot of the scripts clubs we have, typically you can also find like 5C versions of. So for example, we have a student newspaper at Scripps. It's called the Scripps Voice. There's also a Claremont College's student newspaper called the Student Life. If you're interested in journalism, maybe you write for the Scripps one, maybe you write for the Claremont College's one, or maybe you're a writer for both. Um, so there's, there's different opportunities to, to engage uh, either on your campus or broadly across the Claremont College's or even both. Thank you, friends. There's also a lot of interest um, when it comes to residential life. Would you mind touching a little bit about how housing works at your particular institutions? Do students live alone with roommates? Do they get to pick their roommates? What does that look like? I'm, I'm happy to start. Um, I imagine that our process is pretty similar at across like the five colleges. So chances are that as a first year student or as a freshman, you will have a roommate. Um, at Mud specifically, that roommate would be someone uh, that's also freshman and someone of your same identified gender. Uh, after that, for your subsequent years, we have a room lottery that's very common at a lot of small liberal arts colleges. So you get a number and that basically dictates when you can go and like claim a room with the person that you want to live uh, the next year. At Pomona, it's very similar. Um, our sponsor groups, which I touched on a little bit earlier, are all focused to supporting and encouraging and building community for first years. Um, and about two thirds of Pomona students will have a single on campus. So um, even if you are a first year, you'll probably have uh, a single, but you're still on a hall with other first years and your sponsors do a really good job of trying to connect you with one another. And at Scripps in your first year, you'll typically live in a double or a triple. So you'll have one roommate or two roommates. And we pair you with your roommate and which residence hall you'll live in in one of our 11 residence halls based on a housing questionnaire that you fill out in the summer. And our director of campus life always likes to joke, make sure you fill that out based on who you are, not, who, not on who you aspire to be. Um, so if you're like me and you don't, you know, you're not a morning person, don't say you're a morning person. Um, and then after that, you can, uh, as I talked about the learning and thematic communities at Scripps and your beginning your sophomore year, you have more flexibility with who you wanna live with and which residence halls you wanna live in. Wonderful. All right, thank you. We'll go ahead and transition to dining options within the Claremont Colleges. Would anyone like to kick us off in talking about the different dining halls and the eating options that our students have? I love food, so yes. <laughs> um, so the dining halls at the five C's are phenomenal. And I will say that some of my favorite dishes that I've eaten have not been on Pomona's campus. Like Scripps's pasta is chef's kiss. And then I love going to Pitzer's campus whenever they have sopes or um, Latinx food. Um, so it's it's really, really, really wonderful to be able to go across the different dining halls and use your swipe card just that you would for on your campus and going there. And the different eateries that are on the different campuses, um, the coffee shops or like the pub-esque like burger fries kind of snack things, you have Claremont cash that you can use across the five C's as well that will allow you to have that. So the food at the Claremont College is so good. Um, so sorry if I took someone's thunder. <laughs> I'll jump in and also I'll add that you as a student have the opportunity to select the meal plan that you would like, right? How many meals per week? And as has, it's already been shared, you get to go ahead and your meal card will swipe at the different dining halls across the Claremont Colleges. And I believe uh, if I'm not misspeaking, um, a couple of students um, at Harvey Mudd did create a landing page where you can actually get to see the different meals that are offered uh, across all the schools for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And so you really can sit there every Monday morning and sort of plan out what your week will look like and who will be offering what. I think we had one other question that touched on a uh, study abroad. So if anyone could share out on this uh, might be our last question too, how the study abroad programs have been affected by COVID-19 and will the future study abroad continue depending on certain circumstances um, within each country? 
I can just quickly chime in about that. Um, yes, everything has been impacted by COVID-19 when it comes to international experiences and international travel. And, you know, for Pitzer, we have our direct run programs and we have a little bit more sort of control and knowledge about how those might run in the future because they are Pitzer particular programs. But honestly, because a lot of us partner with these outside institutions uh, for study abroad programs or outside programs, it is sort of up to the whim of those particular partners. And so oftentimes we have to sort of wait and see what happens, but also really, I think, take the direction of public safety and um, just being cautious when it comes to sending our students off into a part of the world during a global pandemic. So I think that you're still going to have a lot of options when it comes to study abroad by the time that you get here, but they may have shifted because of what's going on currently. Wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing, everyone. We want to be respectful of your time. So at this moment, our event concludes. I'll leave you with one last post in this chat. If I can go ahead and make sure to include it. Where's my chat? OK, here we go. We are offering two additional sessions in the month of November. Uh, on November 5th, our deans and directors will discuss admission during the COVID pandemic. And then on the 17th, we'd like to invite you to join us for a five Claremont Colleges wide student panel where each office will have a student ambassador speak to their particular experience on campus as well. So while you won't be able to copy the link that's just been shared out, you are welcome to click on both of those URLs and it'll open up a tab on your end so that you can then go back and uh, register at, a, at another moment. Anyways, thank you so much for joining us. We wish you a wonderful rest of your weekend and we are here to answer any questions in the future. Enjoy everyone.